top 10 words added to the dictionary in 2019. Hello everyone, today is January 1st, 2020. Now, the English language is constantly evolving, especially our vocabulary. Because of that, every year, every day, every month, new words are being created and being added to the dictionary. In fact, in 2019, over 300 words were added to the dictionary. And in this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 new words added to the dictionary in 2019. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforestenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's review the top 10 words added to the dictionary in 2019. Number one, buzzy. Buzzy. This is an adjective. Now, when something is buzzy, it means that that something is talked about a lot, is really an interest for the general public and the media. So we could say this new movie is buzzy. Remember, it's an adjective. This new movie is buzzy. That would simply mean that everyone is talking about that new movie. That new movie is really popular, an area of interest, buzzy. Number two, screen time. This is a noun. You've probably heard this one, right? Of course, screen time refers to the total time you spend on devices. We live in a digital world. Of course, this is something that we should now monitor that we didn't have to monitor in the past. So to use this in a sentence, I could say, my New Year's resolution is to reduce my screen time. Remember, it's a noun, so we need an article in front of it. My screen time. Now, let us know in the comments, do you know what your average daily screen time is? Hmm, let us know in the comments. Number three, Stan. Now, Stan is the name of a man in North America. It's a pretty popular name. We're not talking about the name. In this case, Stan is being used as an adjective and it's actually a negative adjective because it describes an overly zealous and obsessive fan, okay? So you can think of it as a super fan, but in a bad way. So a fan that might stalk the person and be really obsessed with them in a really creepy way. So I really hope that you guys are not stands. Okay, I hope you're fans, which means you really like me and the videos I provide, which would be awesome, but I don't want you to be stands, which means you're obsessive, okay? Now, interestingly, you might be like, hey, this sounds familiar because this new adjective, it comes from an Eminem song called Stan. And this song, which was very popular, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, not recently, a long time ago, but this song tells the story about an obsessive fan and the name of that fan is Stan. So please just confirm in the comments that you are a fan and not a Stan. That would be great. Number four, bingeable. Okay, this one you definitely need to know. Bingeable, it's an adjective. It comes from the verb to binge. What does this mean? You do it every day to binge watch, okay? To binge watch. That means you watch many, many episodes at once in one period of time. So if you sit on your couch all weekend and watch Game of Thrones, you're binge watching Game of Thrones. Remember, that's the verb, to binge watch, okay? Now here, 
bingeable is being used as an adjective. So as an example, I could say Game of Thrones is really bingeable, which means it's easy to binge watch it. It's easy to watch many, many episodes in a short period of time bingeable. So let us know in the comments. Tell us a show that you think is bingeable. So you could say the show name is bingeable. Put your example in the comments. Number five, on brand. This is an adjective. This is when somebody does something that is consistent with their public image, okay? So let me give you a really easy example. This sweater that I'm wearing is new. I just bought it. This is the first time I'm wearing this sweater. Now, I love colors and I love flowers. Surprise, surprise, this sweater is colorful and has flowers on it, which means it's consistent with my identity, with my brand. So you could say that sweater is on brand. That sweater is on brand, okay? Another example, if you love pizza and I ask you, hey, what are you having for dinner? And you say, I'm having pizza. I could say, that's so on brand. That's so on brand. Number six, unplug. This is a verb, to unplug. Now this really relates to number two, screen time. So number six, to unplug, of course, this is when you are not on social media, you're not looking at any of your devices, you're not participating in the digital world. So you can say, I need to unplug. I need to go on vacation and unplug for the weekend. So let us know in the comments, when was the last time that you unplugged? So you spent some time without your devices, without the digital world. I know that's a very hard thing to do. Number seven, peak. This is an adjective. So when somebody or something is at its peak, it's at its highest point in terms of performance or popularity. So I could say Netflix is at its peak. So by saying that, I'm implying that right now, Netflix is the most popular it will ever be. I don't know if that's true or not, it's just an example. So you can give us an example of something like technology, a brand, for example, software, maybe Tesla, I don't know, or someone, an actor, for example, a singer, a restaurant that could be at its peak, its highest point in popularity. So try one in the example. Can you think of someone or something that is at its peak right now? Let us know in the comments. Number eight, heart stopper. <gasps> That's a heart stopper. Heart stopper, this is an adjective. So it's something, usually an event or a situation that causes you to go, <gasps> you know, your heart just stops for a second. Obviously your heart doesn't actually stop, it's just an expression. So let's say you're watching the most important football game of the year, the score is tied, there's 10 seconds left, and your player is about to kick the ball, and you go, <gasps> as you wait to find out if they win or lose the game. That would be a heart stopper. So you could say, wow, that game was such a heart stopper. Number nine, to hustle. This is a verb. To hustle means to work really hard, to give it your all, to give everything you have. So as an example, you could say, if you want to be successful, you'd better hustle, which means every day you better work really hard, give it everything you have. So you better not be binge watching 
if you want to be successful. It's almost the opposite of binge watching. You have binge watching on one hand and then you have hustling on the other, which are, you know, two ends of the spectrum. So which one are you? Are you a binge watcher or a hustler? Hmm. Number 10, to double dip. This is a fun one. This is a verb, okay? Now, to double dip, what does this mean? This is when, let's say you're at a party, okay? And you, there's a bowl of chips and there's a bowl of dip. You take a chip, you put it in your dip, and you take a bite. And then, to double dip is when you take the same chip that was just in your mouth and you put it back in the bowl and take another bite. That's to double dip. Now, I guess if you're at a party or you're at a public place for sanitary reasons, this isn't the best thing to do, right? To have everybody's, you know, germs in the communal bowl. So it's considered bad etiquette to double dip. Obviously, if you're at home or with your close friends, you probably don't care if you double dip. So you can let us know, do you double dip? <laughs> I definitely do at home, but when I am out in public places, I'm very aware that you should not double dip. All right, those are the top 10 words added to the dictionary in 2019. As I said, the English language is constantly evolving. New vocabulary is being added every single day. If you want to feel confident understanding native English speakers and having conversations in English, then you need to add these expressions to your vocabulary. Now that's exactly what my students do in the Finally Fluent Academy. That's my premium online program designed to teach you the most common phrasal verbs, idioms, and expressions to help you sound like a native English speaker. There's a link in the comments below for a free seven day trial, so come check it out. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, now you have 10 new must-know words, modern words in your vocabulary right now. That's awesome. Hopefully you were participating and leaving your examples in the comments. Make sure you do that. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.